My name's Aaron Hackett. My role is a technical engineer for I2R Packaging Solutions. I2R manufacture a range of foil trays. We've got two main product ranges. This is a smooth wool chicken tray. Smooth wool products are more suitable for being shelf ready. We sell a lot of, of this kind of product into suppliers and into supermarkets because there's a huge market at the moment. The second product would be characterised as a wrinkle wall. You'd normally find your convenience food, so you've got things like pies, pasties, mince pies during Christmas. The traditional use for a smooth wall would be for a meal that's pre-made, pre-packed and ready to go in the oven or in the microwave. The consumer can put it in and it's very quick, very easy, they can then recycle the tray. The trend over recent years is that the customer wants a product that has got the minimum amount of packaging required. Nobody likes to throw things away and packaging needs to be as efficiently designed as possible. By reducing the amount of material used in the shape of the product, we can reduce the amount of foil needed. The design of this tray has been based upon a chicken. The aluminium is optimised around the chicken, so we use as little, as little as possible. To enhance the design, we've incorporated a number of strengthening ribs, which mean we can reduce the, the gauge of the material. The gauge of the material is quite simply the thickness. This would typically be 150 microns, which is less than a millimetre thick. Because of the way that the shape is formed, and the internal ribs that we've incorporated into the tray, it's strong enough to hold large chicken, to feed five or six people. Everything we use has been designed in some way, at some point by someone. I enjoy working with aluminium because there are so many possibilities. The strength properties that it's got are fantastic. The fact that it's fully recyclable means that you can really push boundaries, so it's a great material to use and work with. I went to university and I studied product design technology which incorporates the design of new products but also the mechanical aspects of materials and how they can be formed in, into different shapes. I've always been somebody that would pull things apart because I wanted to try and understand how they work, why they design the way they are. My job is partly as a packaging designer but more importantly as a project manager. I'm always looking at new design, so I'm always looking at new products, not necessarily food packaging, but everything from cars all, all the way through to household objects, to understand how they've been designed, how they've been built, and if there's anything that I can bring into work to develop new products. I would firstly start with a sketch, take it into the CAD software, and create a product drawing. Then I would discuss in length with teams on site and also our external tool makers to ensure that the product itself can be made. We are always trying to push the products that can be made. Just because we couldn't make it last year, we're gonna try and make it next year. The different shapes that we can make are always changing, always increasing. We are talking with the tool makers and we're trying to innovate. We're trying to create new products that we could then show to the customer and they're gonna want straight away. We've got a finished CAD model of a foil tray. This tray has been designed based on two existing trays that the customer wanted to improve the design. This type of tray would typically be used for a two portion lasagna or possibly moussaka. Got to hold something that's quite runny but also something that's quite weighted. It needs to be very strong and very lightweight as well hence the number of ribs that we've included on the side walls. These ribs help to add strength to the tray. We always try and incorporate quite generous radii onto the trays to remove any stress points. The actual tool design is initiated in-house. We're constantly trying to understand how we can improve the tool design so that we can make what we see on screen a reality. We purchase coils of aluminium foil. They're normally approximately one ton. We would purchase them in at the correct gauge and the correct width for the particular tool that we are using so that we minimise any waste. Once they are delivered, we would then take them into production and we would fix them to what we would call a decoiler, which would automatically unravel the foil from the 
coil, feed it into our tooling press. We then cut and form the tray using the tooling. In less than a second, what we refer to as the punch would come down, it would cut out a shape from the foil. The tool would then press the foil into the tray shape and on its return it would form a bead around the tray so that we've got no sharp edges. This would be formed in the movement of the tool that would firstly draw the foil down into the shape and then also on its return create the bead. You need to be always asking why is something done the way that it is? It's your role as a designer to question that and to really look at what else can be done. Design for sustainability is absolutely critical. The way in which we are working through our natural resources means that every single consumer wants to be helping the environment. If you're going to design a product, you need to be thinking about the environmental impact of that product all the way through to its carbon footprint. The clear benefit of working with aluminium is that it can be endlessly recycled and possibly within 60 days this particular tray could be a drinks can, it could be part of a car, it could be anything. It's a great material to use and work with.